<laughs> okay, hi. Um, it's great to be back and see everybody, um, all the familiar faces. Today I'm going to talk about not just the new calculator poster and how to make how I made it, but also a little bit about my collection too. <coughs> so uh, I live in Blacksburg, Virginia. I think I neglected to say that the other day. Uh, I graduated from Virginia Tech with a BSEE. I'm married to a wife, my wife's Nancy, and uh, for the first time in 27 years, our nest is empty, so uh, that's kind of unique. <laughs> and it really got empty because my daughter left for South Korea to teach English over there, and my son uh, joined the Army and went to Afghanistan. I'm happy to report he's back and now down in Fort Hood, Texas, so uh, that's great. I'm an electrical engineering consultant. Uh, I'm a member of Rotary International, and I'm currently the uh, chief information officer for our district, which is about 3,800 members. So I supply all the IT services to them. I'm uh, the vice president the board of, on the board of um, a regional symphony in our area. And in my spare time, I collect calculators. <laughs> and this is a this is a picture that a new a regional newspaper when they did an article on me took, and uh, I didn't know what I was getting into. But when I answered the door, in comes a reporter and his photographer and all these big uh, tent uh, flashes, and and he goes, "Let's see your collection." So I had a ping pong table in my basement, and we we set the ping pong table up behind me. We pushed a card table up in the front and then two uh, wide boards on either side and just <laughs> laid out the calculator collection as, just as it would fill up in no particular order. Then I crawled under the table and closed up through a little one foot by one foot hole and this guy took the picture and it turned out really neat so I'm proud of that. Uh, I got interested in calculators as I told you all um, the last time uh, I was at the conference. Uh, I saw this uh, MITS 816 calculator in Popular Electronics uh, when I was in high school in 1971, and I had to have it. So I started saving. It was a king's ransom, but half that of a 35, which hadn't come out yet. But $195 later, I had this kit, and I put it together, and in high school, I used to uh, lease it to my teachers for a better grade. So that was <laughs> they, could, they could do the averages so easy. That was that was great. So in my collection I have well over a thousand. I've actually lost count. Uh, gotten so busy in the past few years. But um, I have over two hundred and fifty HPs, three hundred and fifty TIs, others about two hundred and fifty, about a hundred desktops. I only collect them if they're really cool, like Nixie tubes or something like that. Did about 50 slide rules and about 75 mechanicals. And, and just to give you a little feel of what do I do with these thousand calculators, <laughs> well, in my, in my playroom, my game room, I have this big shelf. And uh, I've found that Rubbermaid makes a 28-quart port container that you can stack the calculators in and actually bag them in baggies if necessary uh, if they're really cool uh, to protect them a little bit better. Or these boxes uh, I got from a friend that was a pill distributor for Walmart and they used to transport medications to Walmart and these things and they're great. I mean they're like uh, military grade and you know you could stack them forever and they wouldn't bend. Your calculator fix. So uh, this is uh, an old picture, but uh, I laid out some of my um, HPs uh, actually for the last conference, and uh, that's that's some of my HP collection there. And then uh, I, I, I didn't get into mechanicals, but then one day a friend of mine said, I have this this old mechanical machine. It looks like a pepper grinder, and I went, "Let me see it. Let me see it." And it was a Curta. And he and he said, "Well, I've had it on the shelf for years. I I am asking a hundred dollars for it." And I went, "Here." <laughs> Actually, I felt bad. I gave him two hundred dollars for it, and he was happy. But that was the start of my uh, Curta uh, fascination. And of course, I've gone on to make a couple posters about the Curta, showing it exploded apart. And um, because one of my uh, web subpages is dedicated to the Curta, a lot of people approach me wanting to sell theirs, and 
and I give them a, a, a low ball offer. I tell them that. I say, go to eBay if you want to get a lot of money. If you want a quick deal, you know, send me this much. So I've picked up 13 Curtis um, so far, which I'm proud of. And then a few older, uh, like Resultas, they're pretty common. You can get them for $35 to $50. And then a few unusual, uh, bigger mechanicals. Uh, this Monroe's kind of neat. It's kind of between a big Monroe and a portable uh, Curta, but uh, it was made to be Why not use your website as a clearinghouse? The people who have Curtis to sell come to you and people who have Curtis to buy. And he wants them, Richard. <laughs> No. Well, uh, actually, I, I have a, a web page that people can uh, post uh, their uh, how they found their curta. It's called the registry, and a little bit of story. I ask them for a story of how they came across their curta, and that's that's a, a fun section. I used to put up for sale and wanted uh, ads, but that, that was just took too much time, so I cut that out. But it's still a good clearinghouse because of uh, selling the posters. So. Yeah, this is my web page, uh, uh I welcome you all to visit that. And I've, over the years, made, I guess, six posters now, if you include the first generation of the, the uh, HP. Um, a Curta English and a Curta German, where I blew the Curta apart. I actually disassembled it. It's about 400 pieces, and I arranged the sections of the Curta in little film cans. I, I, uh, hot glued film cans onto about an 18 inch square board and as I took each decade apart I put all the little pieces in the film can uh, and that was critical because the um, curta shafts or the bearings are hand fitted so if you ever take one apart don't get the bearings mixed up because their, their length is different. Um, then I, I had a, a fascination with the art of currency so I made a currency poster then I also had a, a high school age uh, fascinating fascination with telephones, so I made a telephone poster. And but my uh, my two favorites are the Curta and the HP. So this is uh, my presentation from uh, 2005 in Chicago when I was up there, and um, I looked that presentation over before creating this new one. It was kind of interesting uh, how my technology and abilities have evolved since. Uh, I was at the uh, 2005 convention and when I made the first Curta poster. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share some of the things I've learned about the printing industry today with you all. Um, and uh, also show you uh, how the new poster evolved. So this is the um, version one of the HP Curta poster and uh, it ended, I guess, with uh, the uh, 30, um, 33, 33 years. Yeah. yeah. And the way I did it is I I went onto a CAD package and I manipulated uh, vectored boxes until I got the things to fit uh, properly. And then I made a little light stand with four under counter fluorescent fixtures. And it turns out that that was so bright it probably made the pictures too bright. But I didn't know that back then. Um, nevertheless, I I did get. Uh, pictures that were usable out of that and uh, so that's how I took the pictures before. Then I brought that CAD drawing into a, a JPEG import into a sub layer in Photoshop and that was the outline for where I had to fit all of the pictures onto the um, onto the poster. So I scaled by pixel crunching by resizing uh, in onto this sub layer where I had my outlines for all the calculators. So I think uh, back in those days my camera was about two megapixel. Amazing how that used to be a lot. But I crunched that down by the resize function uh, to about 145k for each of the calculator images. That still attained the 300 dot per inch goal that I needed for the printer, but if you wanted to enlarge it again, well, all that information is lost once you resize. So that's the disadvantage of uh, uh, pushing pixels on the screen. So this poster, the Photoshop poster, ended up with 403 layers. Of course, one of the flaws in Photoshop is each text entry requires a separate layer, which was kind of uh, 
uh, burdening to deal with, but still, 403 layers later, I had a poster. Then I printed it to a PDF generating printer. Uh, there's a great one that's free on the web called Primo PDF. I use all the time. That's my favorite. But uh, that generated the PDF format file that all the big printers can deal with now. And that makes uh, it a lot easier to uh, transport, of course, than a JPEG image or something like that. So then the timeline for the version 2 began. I think August uh, 2010, right before the, the HHC, I started the project. And in September, I sent a prototype to uh, Richard. And uh, I think he showed it to the, the group uh, during that. And right after that, uh, uh, conference, I remember I received an email from Jake going, I want to buy one. <laughs> and so that was a little nudge in the right direction. Tim? Uh, just a note, Richard, if you're wondering where that went, I stole it. It's on my wall. Cool. Um, it's a good place for it. I have, yeah, the new one's better than that now. So anyway, then finally in February, Richard sent me an email and he said, uh, you asked for the best time to update the calculator poster. The time is now, and boy, that pulled the trigger. So I got really busy in February, and for the next number of months, um, pulled together the final details of the poster. And um, But before we get into those details, I wanted to just show you a couple curious things. This is my, my old uh, Canon 2 megapixel camera, and this is the camera that I use to take the shots that are on the new poster. Um, still primitive compared to a, a, a 35 millimeter SLR type, but more than ample for, for the needs of the poster. And I love this shot. I thought I was hot having a one inch uh, dangle display on the back of that camera back in those days. Of course, now they, they take up the whole screen. So I have found over the years that I can take just as good a picture with uh, using one of those inspection lights and you pop the magnifying glass out of it and put a cardboard insert in and it gives great lighting for real good for, for real close-up work now if you're pulling back on a calculator you get into reflection issues to where you have to get your light source further moved away and so in that case i just swing it up and i have uh, two uh, of the conventional uh, desk lamps and they have the bulbs are all the same um, uh, Temperature. color uh, temperature so that's critical and you just set the camera white balance to the color temperature of the fluorescence and pull the lights back to where you don't pick up any reflections and finally I found that it works best to back off of the subject and use the zoom a little most cameras in, in the wide angle mode actually do uh, digital correction to the picture to, to correct for the uh, curvatures that the lens have and what would happen, it's, um, it's not showing up on the screen, I guess we're being cut off a little bit, but on the original one, the, the angle was so slanted you, could, you couldn't even see the, um, the, the logo, the 35 on the bottom, but when you pull back a little bit, that distortion gets um, uh, removed and you can actually pick up some of the side aspects which helps for uh, the picture. Uh, let's see what else. Um, and then, of course, also, uh, <coughs> I, I have a, I took a picture of every calculator with its display on. And you really can't take a picture of the LEDs with lights on the subject and the LED display on. So I had to take two pictures, one with the lights off, one with the lights on, and composite them together. But that gave me the results I was after. And it doesn't show up good on the. Um, the LCD, but you can see how pale um, on the original that's on your thumb drive, how pale the uh, and washed out the color is low contrast essentially compared to the image that I got on uh, version two. So that helped a lot. The next big transition that I went through, instead of doing pixel pushing with Photoshop, I shifted to a true desktop publishing program. And if you've never messed with a desktop publishing program, it's a, it's a really uh, unique tool and it, it's perfect if you're doing newsletters or posters or anything where you need to control your images and text as objects. That's the key. 
There's a lot of really popular ones like InDesign and uh, Cork Express are the two most popular, but they're expensive to the devil. I found a really great company in the UK called Serif, and they make uh, uh, this program, which is uh, Page Plus. And um, so I've, I use, I've been using Page Plus for two or three years now, and it's a, just a neat program, and it's, you can catch it on sale for maybe 50 bucks. So it, it's just, you can't beat it. So the first thing that it lets you do is I can drop, can drop all the images into this environment at full resolution, no resizing involved. You just scale the object down to fit on the screen. So the full resolution of the original picture is still preserved. You haven't destroyed any of that information yet. Um, there's, you can zoom in um, all the way down. I think um, you can't tell. This is the orange color, and that's actually the uh, HP70. Yep. And it's equivalent to manipulating about a 500 megabyte image with what this poster was. And you try to do that in Photoshop, and it doesn't. <laughs> the next thing was I created a spreadsheet of all the dimensions of all the calculators, and I figured out what my scale factor was going to be. And I got about a, a 1 to 3 ratio. And so for each individual calculator, it told me the height in inches that uh, it needed to be. I could come into the program and wrap uh, a measurement around the top the, the height of the calculator and just scale it until I had exact that dimension. So I'm just scaling the object, I'm not resizing it. So I could go back later and bump it a little bit if I wanted to and no loss in resolution. So that was pretty cool. The other great thing you can do with objects is you can group them and then um, down here you can actually manipulate them, you can, you can align them. Uh, for instance, I could grab this whole row right here and I could click this bottom under arrow align button, which would make all the pictures drop down and be perfectly level at the bottom. Try to do that with pushing bitmaps around the screen. That's nearly impossible. So that's a great benefit. So I was able to set all of my rows, get them perfectly spaced, get them exactly the right height, uh, all by just the tools that are built into this desktop publishing program. <coughs> the hardest part of the project was the data. And I sent emails to tons of people, Richard, Cyril, uh, Vlad, uh, Eric, Jake, Dave Guy. I forgot to send one to Tim, and he immediately said, oh, I have uh, another code name I could have given you. Don't tell me, don't tell me. But uh, uh, I also went to uh, Vladek's uh, most recent issue of the handheld guide to use the uh, uh, actual uh, dates that he had come up with and and so my poster is pretty accurate to the dates uh, that are listed in his latest uh, handbook. I went through all the brochures and manuals of HP to look for little keys like uh, when the brochure was created that date I figured that might be close to when the product was getting to be released. Um, I went to 11 HP sites around the world, including the US, Canada, UK, Singapore, Brazil, South Africa, Germany, France, Korea, Australia, and China. And it was amazing the flux that the calculators would come and go on all these sites. I'd go to about six of them, and they would be devoid of a particular model like the HP 20, and I'd come back two weeks later, and there it would be added back in. It's like, ah, so. I wasn't sure if uh, that was a good reference or not, but I tried to weigh that into the equation. I also found that CDW had a very interesting database at their site, and if you put in the right query, it would look up discontinued models, and I found that their discontinued date just about exactly matched the dates that, that, I, that uh, Vladek knew in his uh, manual and uh, the dates that I knew that were accurate, so that was kind of cool. But this was really tough. Uh, coming up with uh, you know a last best gasp of when the production uh, create and release, date, release dates were. The next thing was with the desktop publishing program, you're not just dealing with RGB like we're used to with um, um, bit pushing programs, uh, a pixel pushing programs. You're actually dealing with the four <coughs> colors: cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 
And there's a big advantage to this uh, that I took it, uh, made use of on the poster. And that is with any text, whether it was a black line or black text, you push the text to 100% on the K level and you turn the colors completely off on all the other levels. And what that does is when they burn the screens for each one of the colors, your text gets burned without any screening and you get perfect edges on all the characters. So they can be really small and still resolved. Uh, four point is very easy to resolve on this poster as a result. So that's a big secret uh, of uh, making uh, your text readable on a, on a newsletter or over on a poster as long as it's black and, and you push the K level up. Um, the next thing was built into this program it is a post processor and when you generate the PDF is actually when all the pictures are resized and they're all resized as a function of the scale that you've asked for the output to be and in this case the poster was 24 by 18 and so it does that automatically for you so that's really cool and really handy you get a perfect printer ready um, PDF that can be handed off they know by opening up the PDF, they know exactly the right size to print. And also, when the PDF gets generated, <coughs> the program can optionally put in all the printer friendly things, such as these little marks or cut marks. So when the papers come off the press, they put them into this giant cutting arm. They line it up with that, and I know I'll have exactly the border that I designed in the poster. Unlike before, if anybody remembers, the version one poster hardly had any border. Well, that's because I told the printer to make it a half inch, but he forgot and cut it right up to almost the edge of the pictures. And I had a thousand of these posters, and he said, you want me to throw them away? And I went, no, I guess I'll take them. But, uh, you know, I've learned my lesson. So now it's built in. He can't mess up. Color registration, alignment dots are all built into the PDF by this program. So that's really, really cool, a perfect tool for interfacing with a, a publishing company. The next thing is, and not all printers can do this, but the newer printing presses um, actually can do a, a st stochastic printing process. And the big change there is, you, if you've ever looked real close at a picture in a newspaper, you can see the little circles and how they're formed and how, of course, when you get close, the image distorts. Well, with the stochastic printing process, they've gone to a frequency modulation and three dot sizes, and they're random, they, they almost become random uh, in their grouping. And as a result, the resolution goes up tremendously. You can't tell real well from the LCD, but when you look at the original, I doubt even with a magnifying glass, you can even see the dot patterns on the poster. It almost looks like a continuous tone. So that was a big breakthrough too. So that was how the uh, version two poster was made and born. And of course now it has uh, included all the uh, latest release models, uh, over 108 calculators, seven palm tops, 11 accessories, six miscellaneous, and in two non-calculator things, uh, such as the um, Stream Smart and the uh, DVM voltmeter, that there's a whole story of why it included that, but that's yeah. another talk. <laughs> so down here are all the newest uh, released calculators, including the 39G2, mm -hmm. um, and all the units were powered up. I remember walking into the 2005 conference and showing my poster, and everybody got excited, and then one guy said. Well, none of the devices are turned on. So I learned my lesson there too. <laughs> so uh, I, I made a conscious effort to make sure all the devices were turned on. Even though it's small, you can still see if it's a red you know, display, LED display, or an LCD display. <clears throat> um, I have included more. I tried to jam as much information as I could come up with on, on this poster. And Richard termed it uh, OS and IO. So I have encoded dots that are placed by each calculator. If it doesn't have um, an A or an RA, then it's strictly an RPN. But how many times have you picked up a Pioneer model and wondered if it was algebraic RPN or both? So now it's encoded on the poster. So um, that's something that I've always wanted. 
uh, some of the OSs, and a lot of information about the expandability of the devices uh, regarding the types of USB, serial ports, infrared, and the stream smart. Um, then I also jammed in extra information anywhere I could find space on the poster just to make use of that empty space. So I further filled out some of the original desktops and I also filled out some more of the amazing HPIL family uh, that was evolved in, in the uh, 71 and 41 days. And even over on the 41 section, I tried to jam in some more of the more common modules that I remember and some of the other peripherals over here. So it got wider, but unfortunately because I was trying to fit more posters in, I did have to make the calculators a little bit smaller, but with the stochastic printing process, they are probably sharper than the larger cousin that uh, there was originally. And so uh, I welcome you all to visit the calculator reference. I did bring uh, an assortment of posters with me, and and um, I sell them for twenty dollars a piece on the site, and either five or ten dollars shipping, and. Uh, I'll sell them here for fifteen dollars a piece. Yeah, take it. So, um, any questions? So, yeah. What's a palm? Uh, what did you palm say? Top. What's a palm top? A, a palm top is, palm is top? like the uh, seventy-one or um, the uh, one hundred two hundred SX. Yep. Okay. Uh, no, these guys bumped okay. up. Okay. Oh, the, okay. oh, okay. The 71 long top. Because it's really not a calculator, it's running a basic or a language of some type. Right? I was just curious how many other version one posters are sold. I actually don't know. I, I haven't I, I have a spreadsheet but I didn't look at it before coming in, I don't remember. Hundreds or Yeah, hundreds. Uh, enough to break even anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah. Cool. Tim? Um, I wanted to share something with you. Um, we spent a lot of time and effort trying to be able to do something with the 15CLE to put in, either work with you directly and put in a, you know, 25% coupon to buy this thing or just a piece of paper that said, you know, one, interested in HP calculator history, you know, a fabulous poster here, and we could not get it by the lawyers. Oh. But we really, yeah. really were trying to do that because okay. everyone at the... Fort Collins office um, has one of your posters. They use them extensively, have little stickers put on them to show which are current models and when they've got questions about how long something was alive and available and things, <laughs> they go to your poster. They'll usually come to me first, po poke the head over the wall and say, you know, when was such and such model? And I say, it's on your poster. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so they'll definitely be contacting to order uh, another big set of those because I'm sure they will be very, very interested in the additional information, the algebraic RPN and all that type of stuff because they found it very, very useful and I wanted, was told specifically by the head of the group to pass on a thank you to you for doing that poster and we find it incredibly useful. Thank you, thank you. code names the code names are quoted so don't get excited if you see something and you know it's not the code name or it didn't have a code name I tried to make up something for everyone just to keep it symmetrical and filled out uh, and Tim's already pointed out uh, one of the tree code names that I missed classic days HP had a big advertising campaign where they would send out an eight and a half by eleven envelope of the 35 or the 85 I mean, of the 80, or uh, the 90, I uh, know, um, what was it, uh, the 65. Uh, and if anybody saw those, do you remember the, the one uh, flyer that came out and you could actually punch the HP 35 out of cardboard and try it in your shirt pocket? I mean, they were classic. Well, in the same time frame when that mailing campaign was going on, um, the 970 came out, and it was in exactly the same package. You know, it looked identical to the packaging and the, the brochure uh, marketing. And then if you study it, you you can tell that um, they leveraged the LED technology that was developed for the Classic Series, 
rechargeable battery technology was leveraged from that family. The inside, the electronics were, uh, was a hybrid integrated electronic um, substrate and that was that came right out of the 65 and so I, I felt like the technology of the product was so related because of what it leveraged from the calculator family Eric. that uh, it just had to be included. That was Eric Vogel who did do that. Oh, cool. Yeah, he spoke to us. And uh, I had I had room right there, so I needed to fill the hole in it. No, that, yeah, you're, that was the Logic Dart, the 970s, logic. many years earlier. Yeah, yeah Logic Dart. That was uh, a yeah, much right, bigger. That was uh, oh, okay. Yeah. A palm top looking thing. So they fit in. So what computers did they work with? with What's that? The 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 palm, the the wires. Uh, this the, the voltmeter. Yeah, the voltmeter. Yeah. It was a standalone device. Oh. It was like, it was a handheld voltmeter that you could probe right into the electronics. That had a, a tip on it that was the probe, oh. and you could stick it in, and the LED display would tell you the voltage. Oh. I mean, that was state of the art back then. Voltmeters were they sat on the bench, and you used a couple probes uh, back in those days. So this was a very small integrated version, a handheld version of a voltmeter. And um, uh, you could even flip the switch and cause the display to flip upside down uh, if you were reading it upside down or right side upside. So that's why the 970 got included. Thank you. <laughs>